All right. So where do I stand, Omar? Right here? <laughs> yeah? OK, so this is the Nintendo. I don't know if you guys, probably not everyone can see it, but um, it's a real Nintendo. Um, <laughs> There's nothing, there's nothing like crazy about it. Um, the craziest thing about it is that I have this cartridge, which I bought um, from the Ukraine. It actually says made in the Ukraine um, right on the thing right here. And it has like a, I don't know if you guys remember, like the gold seal of approval um, for all your Nintendo games. It actually has that, but it says original Crick's seal of quality. I don't know what that means, but um, yeah, so that's it. It's called an EverDrive. Um, the cool thing about this is it's made from a regular um, old Nintendo cartridge, and you can actually make these yourself. Um, but I'm kind of lazy, and I don't have a lot of free time, so I bought it from the Ukraine. Um, it has this slot at the top that you can pop out a uh, SD card. So um, yeah, so all the stuff that like. Because the big question that everyone asks is like, oh, how do you get like your stuff to run on a Nintendo? And this is the ma this is the magic piece. Like this is the thing. And you just pop this SD card in, and it has like a little like tiny um, operating system that's just like a file system reader. Um, and that's the thing that you know reads like gets your ROMs and stuff loaded. Do you still have to blow in it? Blow on it. <laughs> you actually, you actually don't because um, the con connectors are so good that the only reason why you had to do that was because your old games were the connectors were so crappy that um, you had to jiggle it and blow in it and whatever to get them to connect to the, the pins. This one, works every time. this one I have not really had problems with. Like I don't, I, I don't have any problems with it. So this is the, the file like system, operating system. Um, it's just like reading, it's, it's a FAT16 reader, basically. Um, so this is kind of janky. My slides are actual programs. So you'll see as I go through this, I have to hit reset every time. I <laughs> <wanna change. laughs> All right. So this is my slide. And as you can see, if you like look at this slide, I, I can't figure out colors at all. <laughs> I've tried like a lot. And I had it working at one point, and then like one bit changed in a byte. And this is what you get. So the reason why the colors are all messed up is uh, the way that Nintendo does colors are, it has its like palette sheet, right? And then each, each of these, like this is one sprite, right? Like the T is like one sprite. So they come in blocks of four. And the, the surrounding sprites can only use four of the, I think it's 16 colors. Let's just say it's 16 colors, whatever. It can only use four colors. So, so these, these blocks are green, and this whole column is green because I have some attribute messed up in, a, in like a byte. I have like some, like, I don't know, some piece of binary is wrong in the, in the color palette. But then these ones are like, this is what it should, it should be. It should be all white. So anyways, that's a crazy explanation. Yeah. So the Nintendo came out in 1985. This is like the first video game system console that I had. Um, I have like a ton of memories playing it. Um, it was awesome. Like I, I was born just to give you a little context. I was born in '82, so um, I probably got this like I don't know, right around or shortly after it came out, I guess. So to give you kind of like a, a bit of like history about the timing of this stuff, the the processor that it came with was a 6502. Which is the same processor that, Cessor that was with like the, the Apple II, um, Commodore. It, it was by 85, it was kind of an old processor. Like it wasn't, it wasn't new technology at all. Um, it, it was not, it was, it was kind of like, you know, it was popular in the 70s. And this is, it was kind of like a, uh, um, 
like you're thinking like, oh, well, why would they pick that or whatever? Especially like, the, like more context is like the video game industry crashed like earlier with Atari and stuff like in the early 80s. So this was kind of like a, like a revolutionary kind of like thing that they, you know, came out with. Um, but it wasn't revolutionary because the processor is the main point. They added a PPU uh, like graphics card, which made it a little bit better. And they have this APU, which is like five channels of sound, which is uh, like they have like, you know, the noise, all the noises that you could hear and whatever. Sign or no, not sign, square and I don't know, whatever. So now you'll see me like change my janky slides. <laughs> <laughs> So, so JavaScript, um, JavaScript came out 10 years after the Nintendo, um, thereabouts. Uh, I don't know if how many, I guess this is JSLA, so most people are familiar with JavaScript. I know there are a few people here that, that don't know too much about it, but just I tried to make a little ASCII uh, hexagon here, or I mean, sorry, not ASCII, pixel art hexagon. Yeah, you know what? I used the bug to my advantage, and so I like just pushed that uh, hexagon over a little bit, and I'm like, oh, it's like it's a white hexagon. I don't know how to make it green, but oh wait, there's a bug. So I was like, okay, I'll just like push it over a little bit, and then I go, oh, bam, green. Okay, cool. Um, so yeah, so it's got the little node logo thing there. Yeah. Um, anyways, if you don't know that, like the hexagon is like the the node logo and. Other JavaScripty places use hexagon as logos. So yeah, so JavaScript came out 10 years later. Um, probably like no one ever thought anything about the Nintendo when they were making JavaScript. Um, I can't imagine why. Microsoft, uh, it was sorry, step back a bit. Netscape, um, that's where it kind of like came out. And Brendan Eich is the guy that you know wrote it in I don't know a couple days or a week or whatever that mythical story is. And then Microsoft adopts it in 96. It comes out in like IE, um, ECMAScript gets started, TC39. It comes standardized. Other browsers get it. It's mostly like used in browsers, right? We all, or I don't know if all of us, but at least I, my story is like I first used JavaScript in browsers. But I'd always felt like, um, like something that would be really cool to uh, use on the server. So when Node came out, um, and before that, there was actually a couple things like Rhino and all that stuff, but those didn't seem super practical uh, to me, and I think a lot of other people probably too. So when Node came out, that it was actually um, really cool because I could do I could use this language that I knew like pretty well um, and do server side stuff with it. So next slide. <laughs> Okay, so how, this is like this slide is crazy because of the spacing and stuff. But, but the, <laughs> yeah, but uh, this is kind of like a story of what's going on. Um, like how how am I doing this? So these are these are some modules. Um, there's there's dashes in these. I couldn't get dashes working, or I could, but it would have been extra time. So there's no dashes. Um, so the first one is Nestle. Nestle takes like a um, fake JavaScript language. Um, it parses it with Falafel, which is a really cool module that uses Esprima to parse your, your code and makes an AST out of it. And then what Nestle does is it goes through the AST and it finds, um, it finds functions that it recognizes and it takes that like and throws it, spits out some assembly code. So the assembly code then I can take with um, any Nintendo or 6502 assembler and run, that, run it through that, and then I can get a Nintendo binary. And then that runs on the Nintendo. So I say here it kind of works because I was trying to think about how to word it. Um, it's not really a 
compiler, but I wanted to give myself the benefit of the doubt. So I said it kind of worked instead of it barely works. Um, so the reason why it kind of works is because it's, I didn't really start like language first. I didn't go into this thinking, oh, I want to design a language. I went into this kind of going like, oh, I, want, I know how to use JavaScript, and I love Nintendo, and I don't understand Assembler. So I want to be able to like, bridge that gap and, and figure out how to write like, small programs for uh, Nintendo. And so I didn't really like, think, like, oh, I need to you know, support functions and like, logic and all this stuff. I kind of just like, started going, like, OK, like, what does this Assembler do? And oh, OK, throw that into a function, pull out, make things variables or whatever. OK, how do I do this in Falafel to update it to you know, spit this out? And that's where I started like, building this stuff. And then after I got that working and I got function calls and like, object passing and all that, um, I started thinking, like, OK, well, this isn't really a programming. It's not really JavaScript. It's just function calls. So then I started like, adding logic, variable declaration, and stuff like that. So the second module here is Nestle Split. Um, so Nestle Split will take a, a, uh, a ROM file, like your Super Mario Brothers or, um, or Mega Man 2, which I have. Uh, like, so you t it would take basically like this file. And this is, so this is Mega Man 2. Actually, Mega Man 2 is not a good example because the, the stuff is weird. But it'll take a ROM file. And in the ROM file, there's a header. Um, the first, like, I don't know, so many bytes has these, I'm going to shut this off, has, um, has information about where stuff is in the, in the binary file. So for example, if you read the first, um, the first uh, couple bytes, you can tell, like, hey, the sprite data is at this offset. And it's x number of eight kilobyte blocks. So from, from that information, I know that I can read the file um, at, in eight kilobyte increments to whatever that x value is. And if I just output, like split that out of there and output it to a separate file, then I can open up a, um, like a Nintendo CHR editor. And I can see like the sprite sheet from Super Mario Brothers or whatever. That's actually what it, this is using. It's using the sprite sheet from Super Mario Brothers. Um, the only like difference is that I made that made something at the bottom that hexagon looking thing. Um, but other than that, this is the this is the Super Mario Brothers sprite sheet. And I used the I knew, used Nestle Split to split it out of it. And it also takes the, the PRG is it's it's similar stuff like. Depending on ga different games, they put things in different spots. Like a lot of games will put the sprite sheet in the CHR. Some will put like more data in the PRG part of the file. It just depends game to game. Um, it's it, it Nestle Split works um, on a lot of ROMs. It doesn't work on everything because uh, I don't know. Just because like if they like try to cram like stuff into the PRG, I don't know how to like. Or I haven't like figured out how to split that out of there. So Super Mario Brothers was my like kind of base point. I, if, if I can get it working on like this simple game, then like later I can just open up some issues and figure the other the harder stuff out later. Um, the third one is Nestle Sprite. Um, this one I'm not um, using a whole lot yet. The idea behind this was that once I had the CHR file out. I could take the, that data and break it down in, to use other places. So I can get the raw sprite data and then maybe like import that into a browser. And the idea behind it was that eventually I could use that to build a, like a, like a, an editor where you could edit sprite sheets in like a canvas or something. So it's totally not there. Actually, there's a guy um, that I kind of like stole the stuff, so the Nestle Sprite from uh, that, or the idea for it, that he has like some of that stuff working. Um, he's in like a next slide, so or so I'll just kind of skip past that. I think it's the next one. 
Yes. So this Gudaumaya, I don't know if I'm saying that right, but Node Ness. <laughs> so I've been talking with this guy, and he has this uh, node module called Node Ness. And it's this IDE that you can like paste um, assembler code into, and it will uh, it will compile it and stuff, or assemble it or whatever for you. So you and you can and it uses JSNess. I think he's using JSNess, and you can actually like paste this stuff in, click a button, and like it's coming in the emulator through a canvas tag. So it's pretty awesome. He also has, yeah, it's, it's awesome. And he also has, uh, so NodeNest is also compatible with Nest ASM, which is what Nestle uses. So Nest ASM is written in C, but theoretically, you could write something with, and with Nestle, output it, pipe it to NodeNest, because there is a command line utility too, and get a, a, uh, a Nintendo binary, and then play it in JSNess, <laughs> and emu which is emulated in a browser, right? So then you're like playing Nintendo, and the whole time you're using JavaScript, which is pretty awesome. Like that's that's we've come a long way, guys. <laughs> I don't remember what this slide is. Oh, this is. This is not, not supposed to be there. <laughs> Let's see what six is. So this is just like a demo, right? Um, I still haven't got colors working. But I wanted to show off that um, I had uh, the controller working. So, the, so I actually did get like, um, I have like these joystick in it, like methods or whatever that I wrote. They're super janky. But you can pass it in um, a callback, and tell it, and you can add like what sprite you want beforehand. And if you know the um, like the number, if you look at if you use Nestle Split, split out the sprite sheet, open it up in a in an editor, and you can see the actual sprite sheet. You can go through and doing some math, <laughs> um, you can figure out what number of sprite that you want and add that, and then just pass in the the joystick stuff, and you're, it just gives you like some basic joystick stuff. There's no collision detection or anything. It's just pretty basic. Um, I kind of like blew through that and didn't show off the power glove, but I don't know. Do you guys want to see the power glove? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's not that cool. <laughs> it's it's actually like um, I feel kind of bad because like I built this power glove stuff up so bad. And then I, I got it actually working, and it was super disappointing. <laughs> Sounds like every definition of the power glove. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's how it was anyway. So, that's so, bad. I, so the power glove, I, I remember first playing it um, when, I was, uh, when I was a kid. And uh, I thought I was so excited to actually use one. I think a neighbor had it or something. And I was super excited. And then, um, sorry, Omar, I'm like moving around. I was super excited, and then I actually played it, and I was like, "This something's wrong. Like, it's not working. It doesn't make any sense, and I can't even figure out what, how to plug it in right now. Like, what am I supposed to do here?" <laughs> this box. Yeah. So I I played it when I was a kid, or played with it when I was a kid, and it was, I was like, "This is like super dumb," and uh, like a couple months ago when I was doing this, like when I was like trying to prepare for the presentation, I, um, I got it. And I was like, oh, like, it, was only, it was only crappy because I was a kid. And now that I'm an adult, of course, it'll be way easier because I can read the manual. And like, I'm more technical now and all this stuff. And, uh, and uh, yeah, it's still it's still crappy. It's still I took <laughs> it took me like weeks. I was I was like you can ask people at work like I was like trying to figure out how to use this stupid thing. <laughs> What's going on there now? Oh man. Of course. Hey, 
Yeah, that's start. the start button works. That's not what I want to work though. <laughs> Let's try this again. <laughs> that kid and the wizard made it look so cool. I know, I know. That's what I thought too. That wizard was a liar. Man. Did you try moving your fingers? We just misinterpreted what he meant by that. Man, I had this working too. Oh, there we go. There we go. Um, Just clench. <laughs> clench your way to victory. Just, just try and relax. There we go. I, I got I got something going. Doesn't respond well when you're tense. That's not the slide that I wanted, but okay. Let's try this one more time. One more time, guys. There we go. I got it. Let's see what this is. Oh yeah. All right. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Let me see if I can try to get him to. There we go. Or get that. Whatever that thing is, the Goomba. <laughs> So the Power Glove is just, it's, it's no additional work. It's just using the same inputs that the controller is. So it may look fancy to you guys, but. <laughs> well, I mean, that's, that's pretty much it. Um, I, uh, I did this like over the course of like a couple months um, on weekends and stuff. And it was kind of like mostly just me like cursing at midnight, like how to get this stuff working, you know? Um, but yeah, that's it. Uh, I have this like fancy end slide <laughs> that I, I tried to make pixel art for, but it looked it terrible, so I just gave up on it. <laughs> but yeah, that's it. Are there any, I, I don't know. I, I kind of went a lot over time probably with the technical difficulties and stuff, so I don't know how much time we have, but if there's probably like quick questions. Take questions. Is all the source on GitHub pretty much? Yeah. And uh, I don't have this stuff from the, these slides up quite yet, but um, I'll push them tomorrow probably. Cool. But yes, the, the very messy code is on GitHub. Thank you. So your goal with having like the sprites and the controls in there, are you trying to write games for them yet? To, like push directly into the cart? That would be awesome. Um, Right now, I can only make slides <laughs> and like <laughs> and demos. Um, I think for games, you actually need that programming language to be filled out more. I think to to be honest, if I were to, um, I'm kind of burnt out on it now. But it's but if I were to go <laughs> back and like if I really like wanted to work on this more, I'd start from I'd start like just focusing on the language part and getting the compiler to just work for like 6502. And then add the Nintendo stuff second, which is like the opposite of what I did this time. This time it was like Nintendo stuff first, get like basic things working, which was fun for a hack, but it, it's, it has limits, right? Like I can only do like basic slides and like up down demos of like sprites working. If you were to try to like build a game, it just would suck. So yeah. All right. Awesome. All right, give it up for Mike.